Hey everyone, we did an awesome podcast with Tom Reber of The Contractor Fight. If you're in a service business, if you're a contractor, this is gonna be the one for you. We went over some of the points of growing your business of the video I last did, and he expanded on those even more. Stick around to the very end. This thing is filled with great A info. Hey everyone, this is Jacob and my channel is about growing your future through business, investing, and purpose. And today I have on a really awesome guest that I caught his information, grabbed onto it. His show is, his channel is The Contractor Fight. Um, and I just loved every minute of it. So I wanted to have him on and talk about some of these important points and get his perspective. Tom, would you introduce yourself? Hey, what's going on, man? I appreciate you having me here. All that pressure now. You're like, you really liked me, and now i got to be good today. Shit. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I'm Tom Reber. I'm uh, founder of The Contractor Fight, and uh, we, in short, we help bring respect and dignity back to the trades, and we do that by helping guys get their heads right and making their wallets a little thicker yes. and, uh, you know, building the type of teams and cultures that are worthy of respect, and, and so here we are, man. That's, that's our gig. Heck yeah, I love that. And that's such a, an important mission. And, you know, that's one thing, you know, like one of my missions is to inspire other people and mm -hmm. inspire them to do more and know that it's out there. And that's why I felt like it was so important to try to get you on here and, uh, and talk to you about these things. And it just so happened that I made a, a video that released yesterday on how to grow a business to a million and beyond faster. Yeah. And I had five points and I wanted to get your take on these and kind of just use them to start a little bit of conversation. So well, and I know where you, I know where you stand on most of these, <laughs> uh, but so I'll run through them the way I listed them and maybe. All right. Well, to be fair, later. I have not, I have not seen the video yet. So there you go. <laughs> so we're good. That, that's fine. So <laughs> then at the end you can tell me, you know, what, what the priority level is on each, but um, so you, Tom, what's your take on how important is marketing? A business because we know we hear all these people that uh, grow by referral and, and this and that. Um, so give me your take. Oh, well, listen, you know, sales is oxygen and you don't get a sale if you don't have a lead, right? So, um, you know, I, I think I look back at, you know, I, I started a painting company a million years ago and, and it started because this guy at church I heard through the grapevine he was getting his house painted. I was on the bubble of starting my own uh, painting business, and I tapped him on the shoulder. Long story short, I sold him a ten thousand dollar job that should have been thirty. And uh, <laughs> painful <laughs> lesson. And I was in business, right? And then, um, and then we had uh, the next door neighbor, you know, saw me working, and they walked over and they asked me a question. Next thing I know, I'm doing their deck and I'm painting the front of the house and a couple things inside and. Um, you know, and it just seemed like that those first couple months were just like that. Everybody that, that knew me wanted to support me mm -hmm. and, you know, being new in business. And then after those couple months passed by and kind of worked through all the people that, you know, knew that you were in business, uh, I, I woke up really quick to the fact that, holy crap, I don't have any leads. I don't have any jobs. In fact, I didn't even use the term leads back then. I was so mm -hmm. ignorant that I didn't even think in terms of like, marketing. I had no website. I had, I think I had a metal yard sign I paid 80 bucks for. Um, and, uh, it, I quickly realized that, man, nothing happens if the phone's not ringing. Uh, mm -hmm. my uncle is also a painting contractor and he would refer things if he didn't want to me. So that was nice. <laughs> but, uh, so then I, I did what I, I think I do best. And I just started knocking doors. I, I had some sales jobs, you know, selling tools and nails and things like that through the years. Um, windows. Oh, wow. I forgot about windows. That was, that was a, that was a riot. But anyway, um, and what I did in those positions was I was basically business development. I was out pounding the pavement. Yeah. And so I just started knocking doors and I'd see a dumpster and I'd be like, Hey, you got something going on in the house and I paint shit. So we should probably know each other. That was like my line, right? Yeah. And I'd see a contractor driving down the road in a van, a, you know, a remodeler. And I'd, literally call the phone number on the van. Uh, and I, I would go, Hey, it looks like you build nice stuff. I paint stuff. Mm -hmm. Should we know each other? That was as simple as it was. That's, that was my marketing plan. And, um, 
and it was really tough, uh, mm -hmm. re really tough because that just wasn't enough. Yeah. In fact, I've done some videos and podcasts in the past where I estimate that in my first three years of business, I easily, uh, easily cost myself a couple million dollars uh, mm -hmm. because I did not, this is, this is even more micro than the big marketing thing here. Um, I didn't have a customer database. Like I'd paint your house and I'd never talk to you again. I wouldn't yep. put your information anywhere. I wouldn't have nothing like that. Mm -hmm. And here I was doing, you know, we were doing, um, grew from zero to like between three and 400 jobs within our first three years. I mean, just think yeah. about the number of projects that is Oh yeah, just with pure hustle. Mm -hmm. And I was working a lot harder than I needed to a, cause I didn't stay in touch with my database. Didn't even have a database. Didn't even know I was supposed to have one. Dude, yeah. I didn't have a website. I had no marketing plan. I had nothing. And so marketing to me is um, if, if you're not going to, if you're going to hang your hat, let me, and let me asterisk this real quick. If yeah. you're like a handyman or a one man show and you like doing the thing that you do, you like the tools, maybe your spouse works, maybe you got 5 million sitting in the bank somewhere and you just like going out and, and building shit and fix it or painting or whatever. And you don't really want to grow and scale the business and whatever comes comes, then word of mouth is great. Be yeah. that guy. You know what I mean? But if, but like most people that start a business, they want to grow this damn thing mm -hmm. uh, and they want to have something to show for it. Uh, word of mouth is as great as it is, is not enough. In fact, for every hundred leads that came into our company, um, about 80 of them were past customers, influencers, and referrals. Yep. And so only 20 of them were we getting out of roughly 20 out of a hundred, but we needed that 20. And yep. so uh, I, I super, I think it's a big mistake when I hear guys, um, you know, we have a bunch of free groups and obviously YouTube and you see the comments people leave on your channel and my channel, yeah. whatever. And it's like, how do I market my business? I, you know, how do I get my phone to ring? Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it starts with a commitment. You just, you have to understand, you have to be all in. And, and if you're not willing to take, I believe in your first few years of business, 10 to $15 out of every hundred that comes in yeah. and invest it back into marketing. I don't think you're serious about growing your business. Yep. I a hundred percent agree. And that's where, and, and you hit the nail on the head with the asterisk, you know, if you're content with doing this in a small show, because you just run out of, you run out of fuel so fast. Mm -hmm. If you're not, you know, referrals are a piece and there's a bunch of little pieces that you right. have to put together and you have to keep the pedal down. And, um, you know, you just really can't let it up. You need to make sure that those leads are always pouring in no matter what. So, yeah. And I think, I think a big, a big um, part of the marketing plan that people miss is they, they don't understand the power of what I call an influencer. So to me, if I'm a painting contractor, an influencer is a guy who does carpet or hardwood or an interior designer or a realtor, people that are standing in front of my ideal client hundreds of times a year. Yeah. And so that, that is a, an amazing source. I mean, I, I have math here. It's somewhere on my computer here. Hold on. I just had it up. I got to pull this up. I got to share this with you because this is good shit. Because yeah, this, this is how important each point right. is. It can numbers, expand out. <laughs> um, oh, wouldn't you know it? I got it on the other computer. All right. Anyway, so um, I just bought a new Mac and I'm on my old one now because Zoom is on yep. this, whatever. So basically, my goal is to have, um, you know, these influencers, maybe I get three or four realtors. I got a couple home inspectors. I get this, that. Um, if they all give you one lead a quarter, just yep. think about that. If you got, you know, in the math I did with like four, uh, I, I would, I want to say it was 40 influencers or wasn't even that 20 or 30 influencers. If your average job size is five grand, you're going to close like 80% of the influencer leads because yep. they're, they're crazy. There's crazy trust built up there. And depending on your job size, I mean, you know, we, we did anywhere from a half a million to 750 a year just on a few influencer relationships. And so to me, you know, that's got to be part of it. And the other part here that I've kind of been, I, now listen, you've watched my channel, you know that sometimes I get a little extreme in the things that come out of my mouth, okay? Absolutely. All right, I'm about to get extreme, Okay. <laughs> If you want to grow your business and you don't spend at least, at least what you spent on your fucking truck each year on marketing, 
you're not serious about growing your business. Okay. That usually wakes people up, man, I spent 60 grand. My mirrors were 12 grand alone. You know what I mean? It's like, (laughs) and so guys will go out and drop 60 grand on a truck, but they'll bitch about a $15,000 website. That's going to get them job after job after job. They bitch about their SEO guy and all these other things. They, they bitch about like the worst thing they do is they have their wife make their logo for them. Okay. Sure. Your wife is a great person and she might, have been an artist in college or something, but doesn't mean that she understands design and the psychology of design and yeah. colors and all this other shit. And if she does great, she's one of like the three wives on the planet that can build, make the logo for a contractor. Yep. Um, and it's the same with doing your books, right? You, I've, I've ranted on that a lot, like hire a professional. So we, we look at, uh, we, or, or we try to build our own website and fine. If you're in the beginning stages, you don't have any money. All right. You got to get something up there. I get it. Yep. But man, charge enough so you can have money to invest back into the company uh, so that you can market this thing like a boss and not half ass it. Exactly. Well, that, that, I, I can't agree with any of that more. I mean, it's so important. And you, all, you touched on the next two points just by how serious that point is. In my second one, you've already said it. There's a lot of analogies for this, but how important is sales to follow that up? Well, it's blood, right? And it's be, oxygen. And being a professional with yeah. it. Yeah, you know, you know, sales is um, uh, one of those things that we we think we're good at until we really learn what it means to be good at sales. And being good at sta- sales is not like I'm extroverted. I can knock on a door, and I can. That's not sales. That's yeah. hunting. And just because you're talkative, just because you might have some charisma. And, you know, you're likable doesn't mean you're a good salesperson. And on the flip side, somebody who's introverted and more quiet and stuff does and reserved does not mean they they can't be a good salesperson. Mm -hmm. And so sales is really about um, asking great questions and then shutting your damn mouth. And it's it's that simple. You know, in our sales academy, we we have a five step process. And the first process, first step is called the motive. And this is why does somebody want to do the project? Mm -hmm. Now they'll say, oh, I want to make my house or my yard look better, or I want to do this, but there's usually a deeper motive. And most of us make assumptions in the sales process, Mm -hmm. uh, which is why we sit up at 11 o'clock or one in the morning, we negotiate against ourselves that our price is too high. And then we cut 300 bucks off the bid to get it under that thousand, under the 12 grand to 11, nine. So it's an 11 instead of a 12. And then we hit send. This is a true story. I negotiated against myself, made assumptions that my price was too high. They were going to have a problem with my price. Yep. And I sent the bid and they, and I was like 11, nine or whatever. And I was stressed all night about it. And they text me or email me back in the morning. They're like, hey, it's a go, man. This is great. We thought it was going to be over 20 grand. (laughs) It's the worst feeling in the world. You know, so, um, you know, sales, we make, we make, we bring a lot of our own baggage, our own beliefs about money, Mm -hmm. uh, our beliefs about why people should hire us. Like, you know, we do, that's what we call the tap dance, right? We go out to their yard and we're like, we're really awesome. And we don't subcontract and we have this certification and we won this chamber of commerce award. And we, and I want all those things too. And that's great. And we've all the certifications, yeah. but we may, we're making the assumption that that shit's important to the customer. In fact, mm-hmm. you know, you know, when you learn how to ask a really good question, you'll understand that the most important thing in hiring a contractor is the fact that they're, 88 year old dad with emphysema lives with them and they're afraid that he doesn't die because of the dust that's created on the job. Yeah. Or, um, you know, the woman who many years ago had twins and they only slept from like one 30 to three in the afternoon. It was like the only time her kids would sleep. And when we really got to, yeah, she wanted her house done and all this other stuff. Um, but, and I'll, I'll give you guys a couple great questions to get their motive here. I, I just simply asked, I said, I said, Hey, um, listen, what's, what's, um, you're going to hire somebody to do this job. And we had already talked about the typical shit. Right. And then mm-hmm. just something told me to take it deeper. And I said, you're going to hire somebody to do this project. Mm-hmm. They're going to come in. I'm sure. The work's going to be great. You're going to write them a check. They're going to pull out of your driveway and they're going to leave and drive off into the sunset. So I always try to paint that picture. Right. Yeah. I said, how are you going to know you hired the right guy? Okay, and she goes, without missing a beat, never came up in the half-hour conversation that we had. Mm-hmm. She goes, if you don't wake my twins up, I hired the right guy. And I said, um, 
And this is where most of us pounce. We go, oh, well, we won't wake them up and we'll be really quiet. And we're really, or if they say, don't leave a mess, we pounce on that. We never leave a mess. We always clean. Instead of barfing on them and pouncing, just pull back. And I said, uh, I said, that, that's an interesting response. I've never heard that before. I just acknowledged it. And she says, yeah, yeah this is the only time I can sleep and I can do anything for myself is like this hour and a half every day. I don't know what's up with my kids, or my twins, but this is when they sleep. And I just simply said, hey, you know, would it make sense if we adjusted our start time an hour or so later? We adjusted our lunch a bit and we went off site every day for lunch for an hour and a half. And we'll do some other things and have our company meeting or whatever we have to do. Um, and then it might take another day or two to get the job done. But would that help you? And she goes, you do that. You got the job. Because that was the true motive. Yeah. You know, so I, I would encourage people like sales is a skill that can be learned mm -hmm. uh, and it takes practice just like, you know, the golfer goes to the driving range pretty much every day. Yep. The salesperson should be going and doing some role play and getting some sort of training every day as well. Awesome. Yeah, I love that. I love that. It's so many, those important questions. And that's always been one of my problems. I'm an extrovert as well. I'll go out there and I used to just love to talk and talk and talk and talk. Yeah. And me talking is not the answer to anything. It's the, it's the yeah. opposite of what you want to be doing. Well, you know, you go out there and, and you know, one of my business partners, he always says this. He, he's like, before I learned how to sell, I'd go out and have this great conversation with somebody. They'd really like me. I'd go back to my team and I'd go, I really feel good about this one. They really like me. And right. And then we send over our proposal and all this other garbage. And then next thing you know, they're in witness protection. We can't find them. They don't yep. reply. They're ghosting us. And that's one more thing with the sales process. You, you understand their motive, but be, and this is just a, a thing that works for, for us and hundreds of other contractors. Um, we don't ever go to somebody's home without one of two things happening. Number one, they've agreed to uh, write a, a consultation fee or they know they're going to be writing a check for a deposit. Okay. okay. And, um, and we've been doing this for about six years, even before all this Corona stuff and the virtual sales, like, um, the, the amount of time that you can save just by learning how to find somebody's motive and just talk budget a little bit, mm -hmm. that's just two of the five steps will save you gobs and gobs of time. If it's done with the right spirit and tonality. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. I love that. I love that. Well, that leads, and you hit on this too. You hit, uh -oh. you went so wide on number Everything's one. connected, man. Yeah, everything's, everything's connected. connected. You know that. How important is a quality, now, and here, this goes back to if you want to grow. How important is a quality software that allows you to delegate, and keep track of things and run your business? Oh, well, I, I think it's massively important. The, the, the problem is, is that we just don't use it, right? You know, yeah. I get, you probably get this too. People ask, Hey, what's the best software? What's the best CRM? What's the, and my answer is the one you use yep. is the best one because, you know, uh, I find in over the past several years, this has gotten a lot better, but way long ago when I first got into CRMs and stuff, um, they were all built for like white collar industries, right? And yeah. long sales cycles and companies that are selling millions of dollars of software packages to other companies and things like that. And they had all, they were just too cumbersome. And over the past several years, there's been a lot of programs that have come out that are really geared towards a contractor. Yeah. Uh, and again, this, to me, this is just like the marketing thing um, and the sales thing. You just have to commit, pick one and commit. And, um, and this is all about having a process. You know, I used to keep, uh, when I was out you know, a million years ago, my painting company doing, doing sales and stuff. I kept my CRM minimized. I had a tablet and I just kept it minimized. And whenever I was talking to somebody, if I sold a job, if I got a lead, whatever it was, I just bring it up. And I just got in the habit of just filling it out. And when you do, most guys wait till the end of the day, most guys wait to the end of the week. And then you blow it off that week because something happened. You know, it's fish fry night. You got to go to the fish fry because you're in Illinois there, right? And uh, <laughs> see, I grew up there, man. <laughs> Actually, if you want good fish fry, you got to go over the border, right? You go up north, um, beyond the cheddar curtain. So, um, but, uh, you know, the, the, there's an old saying in marketing and sales, money's in the list. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what I was talking about earlier is I, I had zero information. And here's the thing. Mm -hmm. um, here's a couple, couple things here. Number one, when somebody gives you money, they're more likely to do it again. 
Okay, yep. so that's number one. And there's percentages like 80% more likely or some shit like that, right? Number two, um, when somebody doesn't buy from you, it doesn't mean they hate you, you were too much money or whatever. You don't know. Sometimes they ghost you, they disappear, and then you follow up or they reach back out to you and they go, hey, is that bid still good? My mother-in-law died and it's been a crazy three months. Okay, life happens. And if we're not staying in touch with people, I mean, you paid to get the phone to ring. It's, you gave your time or your money, right? You gave your time or your money or both to get the fucking phone to ring. And then you take that lead and you never heard from them. They didn't buy from you and you're like, screw you. And you light it on fire and throw it away. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's just stupidity because um, there's crazy data out here, but sometimes people hire the wrong co contractor mm -hmm. and a year later they call you to do the service or whatever it is, or to fix the mistake. So that those are a couple of things. And the other one <clears throat> is um, I'm amazed at how many of my clients in the past didn't know other services that we did. Oh, I'm yeah. telling you, I'm driving. I, I did 60, about $60,000 of interior painting for this woman once in Naperville, Illinois. Mm -hmm. And driving, cruising down the road one day, I'm happy. You know, it's a spring day. The windows are down. I'm smiling. You know, my long hair is blowing in the breeze. You know. And um, I just kind of glance over as I'm passing this, and I see this painting crew out and they're at her house and I'm like, and they're painting the exterior. I'm like, what the hell? So I call her. I'm like, Hey, it's Tom. She's like, Oh, hi. You know, like nothing's wrong. And I'm like, are, are you mad at me? She's like, no, why? So well, I've been to your house like four times, five times painted the inside over the last few years. And you got so-and-so who was my biggest competitor at the time painting your exterior. She goes, well, I didn't know you painted exteriors. And, um, and that's when I learned to do the did you know communication, right? Yeah. Uh, leaving, leave behinds on job sites or, you know, email, you know, marketing things like, hey, did you know that we also do this? Do, do. And so building a, a database, having a good CRM um, is going to help you do all these things, but you got to commit, you know, so many and, and, and um, just start. Cause you're going to figure it's just like anything else, yeah. marketing, sales, playing guitar, riding a bike. You're going to get, figure things out along the way, but you have to commit. You have to start quit being lazy about it um, exactly. and just make it happen. Yeah. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. The only thing that I'd even add is obviously that, that the best point, the one of the points I loved was, you know, just the one you use is a great CRM. Right. The only thing that I like to look for is the ability. If you're wanting to grow, how well will it scale with your company? Because I see so many people wanting to use the free thing because yeah. it doesn't, it's free, yeah. you know, not spend 70 to 150 bucks a month on something that they never have to change. Because if you get your database built and then you have to migrate your database, you'll wish you never made that small mistake. Exactly. You know, my, my biggest complaint about CRMs um, for contractors, and I think it's just because we have a quick sales cycle for the most yeah. part, unless you're a home builder or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, is I think, this is personal opinion, I'm sure there's things out there that work. When it comes to leads and say, leads tra lead tracking and sales tracking, I've yeah. actually always preferred a spreadsheet. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, because I find that's where a lot of guys get hung up. They get a CRM because they want to start tracking their leads or something. Mm -hmm. And the, and the CRMs make it a little too complicated. I get you. And, um, and, but you know, Hey, it's better than nothing. You know, if I didn't know a spreadsheet before a CRM, it probably yeah. wouldn't be a big deal. It's like my bookkeeper hates QuickBooks online because you know, if you ever use QuickBooks before it was online yep. and I use the online version, apparently, you whole know, different ball game. It's a whole different ball game, and I don't know. I don't even have QuickBooks on my computer. So. <laughs> right. I know. Well, we'll roll right into these next ones, and these right, are two man. that I don't know how you feel on. So, uh -oh. how important is a coach? How important is someone to help basically mentor you and 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 get you pointed in the right direction from an outside perspective? Well, you know, I am a coach, so that's you know, you're you're kind of setting me up there to say, Hey, coaches are great. But I, I do believe they are because you can learn. I mean, everything that comes out of a coach's mouth for the most part, you can generally find for free somewhere in the world. Right. Yes. Um, so, but I think if you want to move faster, 
Mm -hmm. you hire a coach who has a proven history of working with people and getting them the results that you want. I mean, it's, I mean, you know, the golfers, best golfers have a swing coach and, you know, um, you know, you get, you get coached in um, firearms when you're in the military, you have a coach, we, you, you have, you know, every, every top performer, there's vocal coaches, there's, cause that's, it's somebody who's not emotionally attached. Mm -hmm. Cause when we're emotionally attached, attached to a lot of the decisions we have to make in our business or our own bullshit and things like that, Yep. You know, we lie to ourselves. And so a coach is outside, not emotion, emotionally attached, can see the things that you can't see. I think somebody who's been around the block a little bit, who understands, yeah. um, you know, uh, maybe marketing a little better or whatever, they can kind of see around the bend. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm able, because of my experience of screwing up my database stuff early on, I can see around the bend. And that's actually made people millions of dollars because I have that wisdom now, right? Exactly. So, um, so, yeah, I think, um, you know, you got to have a coach that, that you, you're going to resonate with, that you have a chemistry with, that speaks your language. And I think, I think coaches are great. You just got to find the one that works for you. I know I'm not a fit for everybody. I'm a little rough around the edges and, um, <laughs> you, you know, and things like that. And there's other people that, you know, resonate really well with a super introverted coach. But it really just depends on what you want, too. Like, I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when they hire a coach – is they don't have absolute clarity on the outcome they're looking for. They just yep. go, I want my business to get better. Yep. So I'm going to hire a business coach. Mm-hmm. Um, and I always push and go, well, what a- aspect of your business? Well, every aspect. Okay. Well, which one's first, you know, like if you had to rank them and, and we always start with the mindset, it always starts with our, what's between our ears. That's what the yep. whole contractor fight is about. Yeah. Um, but then we really, we, we typically in our process and I'm not pitching our process, but I, we typically go, fix your mind, get your mind where it needs to be. Then let's take care of the oxygen. Okay. Meaning you got to make money. Yeah. We got to put points on the board, marketing and sales so that you can pay yourself. So, you know, when you're working those long hours and you go home, you at least feel like you're making some progress because you're paying yourself. Most of us, and I've been there, all this money comes into our business and we, then we divvy it out and we're left holding like four bucks and we're like, what the hell just happened? Okay. And that's because we, we allow everyone else to get fed before we get fed or get oxygen or whatever you want to talk about or example you want to use. And what I want to encourage guys is make sure that you're working with a coach. I have worked with coaches personally, many of them. Um, I had one many years ago where they were all about building infrastructure of the business, but there was very little emphasis on the mindset and very little emphasis on you getting your own. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and so I just think, make sure that, that you're working with somebody who understands the mental game and understands, um, you know, the, how important it is to get clarity on specifically what you like, if you're making a kick, kick butt money right now mm-hmm. and marketing is good, but maybe you're not happy with your clothes, right. Then get some sales training. If you've, yeah. you know, maybe it's, it's bookkeeping stuff. Maybe it's, it's the, <laughs> my first year of business, I had like 50 grand left in the bank at the end of the year. And I was like, how the hell did that happen? Right. I had no idea. It just happened because I was hustling. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, but I, I knew nothing about the books. I knew nothing about break even and gross profit and all this other shit. So I had to get some coaching on that. Mm -hmm. And, um, so I just didn't get specific. And then, um, and then I understand, I understand this coach, not every coaching relationship should be forever because you evolve, you grow. Mm -hmm. Um, we have people that, come into our programs and they're like, you know, I've tapped them on the shoulder. I think I, I'm like, I think you're done here. And they're like, yeah. what? And I'm like, no, I think you're, I think you're done. Like you, you're doing, we've hit the goals that you've wanted to hit. Yeah. You know what I mean, so let's, what's next for you. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I got one more. We'll keep it quick because I know you don't oh, have man. much time. Uh, and, and this is something that's been monumental, push me more towards coaching and everything mm-hmm. as of the past year, but how important is, uh, obviously continued learning, but with an emphasis on, you know, actually getting out and going to conferences, seeing other people that are, are, are yeah. driven um, and using that to get, you know, mindset. I, Grant Cardone's one I'm big on and Tony Robbins, you know, mm-hmm. I've been going to at least one of their events every year for the past couple of years. Yeah. Listen, uh, you know, um, for me, what's at the root of an event is being around other people. 
Yes. Other like, you know, so we could do it like you and I are doing now. We could do it in small groups. It doesn't have to be a big stadium. It could be, yep. um, I, I have had the most growth in my life because I chose to get in the room with more successful people. Yes. Um, you, you know, I'm one of the turning points in my life was several years ago. I had a friend who he was, um, part of a nonprofit organization. It was for college guys that it was this leadership thing, Academy. Mm -hmm. Um, it was founded by, you know, this billionaire in the oil or founded by this, uh, one of the guys, a guy named Jerry Nelson, who started Ticketmaster. Okay. And Doug in the desert. Now we have Scottsdale. He owned, he's owned 44 companies, super, super cool guy. He wanted to have an impact. So he started this leadership thing and then it grew, blah, blah, blah. And make a long story short, I ended up um, going and being a breakout speaker at one of their events several years ago. Oh. And that for me, I didn't want to go. Um, I said no, I think two years in a row. Mm -hmm. to my buddy I made some excuse that I couldn't go you know whatever it was and then the, the year that I went I was like I got to get over this fear of mine because my fear was that I was stupid I I didn't uh, do well in school I rode the short bus for two years literally in grade school I was in uh, you know the learning disabled class or whatever you want to call it and so I had this baggage that I was just stupid. I wasn't smart. I couldn't compete intellectually. So that was at the root of why I didn't go to that thing. Cause it was a, it was this college fraternity event. I didn't finish college. Yeah. Um, it was all these smart guys in my mind. Right. Yeah. And I didn't want to put myself in the middle of that and be exposed as a fraud. Like I'm stupid. And so anyway, I chose to walk into the punch. I went there and I walked in the room and the most amazing thing happened. Not really. I walked in the room and I look over on the wall and they had everyone's bios up on the wall. Yeah. Jerry Nelson is like 17 pages of all his accomplishments <laughs> and the billionaire in the oil industry and the guy who owns the lumber company and my buddy who owns a $60 million company and all his other garbage. And then it gets to me and it's like three sentences, you know, Tom had a painting company and he was a Marine and you know, United States Marine and he's here. <laughs> just like, and I just, it was just, I didn't even read everything. I just see the length of everyone's bios on the wall. And so the first thing I saw when I walked in this room uh, at this event, which was in Cabo, by the way, I, I looked and just from afar, I'm just like, yeah, you're just not that impressive. You're a dumb shit. And I had to battle that. Fast forward to the end of the week, the guys on the board, all these massively successful guys asked me to sit in on their um, board meeting to talk about how they were going to market the event in the future. Mm -hmm. I sat down, I took some notes, and um, just in case they asked me what I was thinking, I would at least know what I was thinking. And we're almost out of there, and billionaire guy says, hey, let's get out of here. And this other dude who owns this massively huge lumber company goes, well, Tom's new here. Tom, what do you think we should do? I went shit. And in about 40, 45 seconds, I just kind of rattled off some of the bullet points. Hey, if I were in charge of marketing this thing, this is what I would do. Billionaire guy looks at his assistant or some dude that's there with him and goes, do we have the capability to do all that? And the guy goes, yeah. He goes, all right, let's do that. Meeting adjourned. They all got up and walked away. I'm sitting there at this table overlooking the South China Sea or not South, uh, the Sea of Cortez thing in the Philippines there for a minute. Uh, yeah. And uh, the sun's going down. And God's honest truth, I walked out on this gorgeous patio, this huge compound, cracked open a beer. I looked out at the sun. I had tears in my eyes, and I actually said out loud to myself, you're not stupid. And, but that moment does, and that moment changed my life and my career and my bank wow. account and everything because it gave me the mojo. And it all started because I decided to go to an event, that is awesome. get myself in the room where I wasn't the smartest guy. Yes. And, um, and that's actually one of the hardest things for me about being a coach is everybody's always coming to me mm -hmm. and I have to be really intentional about making sure that I'm reaching out to people that know more than me or more successful than me and things like that. And because otherwise it goes to our head and we think we're all that and we're yeah. really not, but I, I would encourage people get in the room with people. Um, you know, I don't know who said it first, but if you're the smartest one in the room, you're the wrong room, right? I was so, waiting for the point to put that slide that yeah. in. So you already <laughs> stole it from me. All right. <laughs> um, but most of us, we don't go to these things because we don't know. And, you know, we didn't have the money. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm broke. I've gone to events where I put it on a credit card that I 
had to use two credit cards to pay for the fucking event. Right. Yeah. Um, and you know, I've slept in my car. I've, you know, in, instead of avoiding a hotel room or something just to be around certain people. And so exactly. this, this comes back to investing in yourself, everything yes. we're talking about here, marketing and sales and your CRM and a coach and events. It's all really at the, at the end of all this, it's about you and taking the, your time and money, investing in you. Um, and then just taking some action. hundred percent, hundred percent. I love the whole premise you put on that. If you don't have it right up here, mm -hmm. you won't have it right anywhere. Yeah. And so many of these things hit on that. Well, Tom, thank you so much for coming on. Let, that was, that was my five. How, how do you feel like I did on five points to, you did to good man? You did really good. Cool. I'm trying to think if I'd add anything. That's what I wanted um, to add. Yeah. You know, I, I think, um, it's I think really just becoming a people expert. If you want to scale your business, you know, can we kind of touch on that in sales, but really yeah. understand people, um, you know, the whole labor shortage in the trades is really, really tough. And mm -hmm. it has been for a long time. And I think it has been for a few reasons. One, uh, our country has been telling you go to college, right. Yeah. For forever. Yeah. Um, and if you don't go to college, you're a moron and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, Number two, most contractors are great at the craft, great people, but most don't make the money they should be making. And it's real, and financially, it's not that attractive. Like you, yeah. you're tired, you're dirty, and you're broke. Why would anyone want to look at their dad or their uncle or whatever and follow in those footsteps? Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think it's – and then the third is most of us take the leadership qualities or skills that we learned from our dads, like me, yeah. um, who'd walk on the job site and – he was a ball buster. Right. Yeah. And um, sometimes you got to kick people in the tail and stuff, but if that's your default way of leading your team, you're really going to yeah. struggle. So I, I think it really comes down to really understand what makes your people tick and, you know, build the type of culture that uh, is attractive to others, but none of that, it, all that's harder if you're not marketing and selling and the, all the other things that we talked about. So it's different stages. Awesome. But no, awesome. man, I think you knocked it out of the park, man. You got, hey. you got the five. Heck yeah. There's five hey. things. We're good, right? So. For sure. We're, we're getting there. Well, hey, thank you so much for coming on. This is awesome. Uh, is there any shout outs to any of the things you're doing that you want to throw out here at the end? Listen, I, I just appreciate you having me on. You know, we have our Contractor Fight TV channel on YouTube and a Contractor Fight podcast, bunch of stuff. We've got a great free Facebook group. You know, anyone can hop on there. If somebody wants to learn how to uh, make sure they're pricing their work right, they can go to thecontractorfight.com forward slash 50. And that's uh, in, in honor of the 50% gross profit that we encourage yes. people to get. That means you do a $10,000 job and only cost you five to do. You got five left. Mm -hmm. And that's the fastest way to put some more money in your pocket. So super simple calculator uh, that people can download there. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you again. Everyone, thank you for watching. We'll see you all soon. Appreciate you, man.